All right, we are going to start our big adventure um, with area between two curves, and then eventually we'll get into revolutions of that area around an axis to create a three-dimensional shape and get some volumes, or using it as a base to then stack and make a shape, a 3D shape on top of it. Okay, so if you had two continuous functions on a closed interval and f of x is always greater than g of x, that's important. Okay, and we wanna find the area between those two graphs. The way that we are going to do this is a little bit of like a Riemann sums um, rehash. We aren't gonna go through and actually calculate all of these. So if you did not like Riemann sums calculations, it's okay, just hold tight for a second. But you do need to think about the height of each one of those bars is the length or the distance between your top function and your bottom function. And it's going to be important to draw that in and say like, this is my top function, this is my bottom function that's making up those rectangles. And then delta x is that change in x, it's that dx piece that's your bottom. Now, of course, we're going to make um, that change in X be as small as possible. We're going to let the number of rectangles go to infinity in theory. And when we do that, we get that nice smooth curve. And so this is how we're going to find the area between two curves, okay? This is where all of your parent function um, graphs are going to come into play. I wanna find the region R bounded above by f of x. So let's go ahead and sketch this graph. All right, x plus four. So y-intercept of four, positive slope. That's all that we need to know, okay? So it's a bounded above by that graph. So that's our top function. It's bounded below by three minus x over two, so y-intercept of three, and then a negative slope, okay? From one to four. And it doesn't even really matter what that is, like this is my area here, okay? Now, once you've kind of identified that, you've graphed and found that area, you're going to want to then draw in that representative piece, okay? So like, this is my representative piece. So f of x is my top, g of x is my bottom, and I'm going to use this. We're gonna integrate from one to four, my top function minus my bottom function. All right, let's go ahead and simplify inside. I'm gonna have x to the power of one plus one half x to the power of one. So we'll have three halves x, one plus one half. And then I have four minus three, so plus one. All right, we're gonna use the fundamental theorem of calculus here. So I keep the three halves x squared divided by two, so that's gonna become three-fourths, plus the antiderivative of one is x, and this goes from x equals one to four. I plug that in three-fourths times 16 plus four minus, let's plug in one, three-fourths times one squared plus one, now, as far as I'm concerned, once you've plugged in, you're kind of good to go, um, but you could simplify this. It's not too terrible. We get four, so 12 plus four, 16 minus, let's see, three fourths plus one minus seven fourths, 16 would be times four. 64 fourths minus seven, so 57 fourths is that area. All 
Great. Let's go ahead and look at another example. Let's look at the graphs of sine of x and cosine of x from 0 to pi. All right, sine of x just goes like this from 0 to pi. Cosine of x goes like this, right? And so I want this from 0 to pi. And I want the graph of the region. Um, the region is the, between the graphs of these. So between would be here and here. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's look at what this representative rectangle would be. Well, right here, my top graph is cosine and my bottom graph is sine intersection point then it switches over here my top graph is sine and my bottom graph is cosine oh goodness okay so i got to set this up it's got to be two separate regions your top and your bottom have to stay consistent Remember, f of x has to be bigger than g of x. So we have to think about where is sine equal to cosine here, okay, in that first quadrant of our unit circle. That's going to be pi over 4. So integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine x minus sine x dx. That's area 1, if you will. Area 2... is the integral from pi over 4 to pi of sine of x minus cosine of x dx. Okay, no algebraic manipulation needs to happen ahead of time. I just need to take antiderivatives. Okay, I'm going to use my little circle cheater. Okay, antiderivative of cosine is sine of x. Negative sine is positive cosine of x from x equals 0 to pi over 4. Plus antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Antiderivative negative cosine is negative sine from x equals pi over 4 to pi. So I have the sine of pi over 4 plus the cosine of pi over 4 minus 0 plus 1, when I plug in x equals 0, plus, all right, cosine of pi is negative 1, so negative, negative 1, 1, minus the sine of pi is 0, minus negative cosine of pi over 4, minus sine of pi over 4. I'm running out of room <laughs> over there. So I get root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 minus 1 plus 1 plus root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2. So I have root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2, those are going to cancel. 2 root 2 is my answer.